Mirroring for Azure SQL Managed Instance is in public preview. Learn all about mirroring and what you need to know to get started and see some cool demos this week on Data Exposed. Hi, I'm Anna Hoffman, and welcome to this episode of Data Exposed. Today, I'm joined by Nicola from the SQL Managed Instance Product Group. Nicola, thanks so much for joining us today. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Thanks, Anna. Glad uh, to be here. Uh, I'm basically a product manager in Azure SQL and my team, uh, responsible for uh, fabric mirroring, and also have been working on data virtualization and a few more topics that are yet to come. So. Awesome. Cool. Well, it's great to have you on the show. And yeah, that's true. You are working on some other areas that are exciting too. So we'll have to get you back on the show again to discuss those. Um, today, we're going to be talking about mirroring, which is something that folks may or may not know about and mirroring in the contents of Azure SQL Managed Instance, which I think is in public preview. But without further ado, I'm going to pass to you. I'd love to learn more about, you know, what is mirroring for folks who don't know and and why should people using SQL Managed Instance today care and and what are some of the things they need to know? Absolutely. Well, uh, let's start off with um, the understanding of the analytics space today. I'm sure this is all a bit familiar to everyone, but uh, it's a little bit long to get new data into your analytics uh, systems. Um, there's a lot of friction between uh, people, processes, tools, etc. So from the moment you want to uh, gets some new data in, it can take a while to uh, to get there. Um, a typical landscape may look like this, and uh, I'm sure you're familiar with it. And if you feel there's a little bit of too much ETL on this screen, uh, bear with me and see uh, how, how fabric mirroring can actually uh, help with, with uh, some of this. Um, essentially, what is fabric mirroring and uh, what did we bring to uh, Azure SQL MI? Uh, it's an ability to continuously replicate your existing SQL MI uh, databases directly into Fabrics One Lake. Um, this creates a read-only, uh, always up-to-date copy um, of the database, um, and it really unlocks all the cool stuff you can do uh, in Fabric in terms of analytics and uh, data and, uh, and ML scenarios. Um, we like to call it zero ETL, which means there's no projects to run or tooling and timelines to uh, get the data flowing and, and your analytics running. And this also includes any DDL changes that may happen on your source database, which um, we believe is a nice, um, nice add-on. Um, this basically gives you a bronze layer of your medallion architecture with, with no tools or code uh, written, and uh, you can, you can uh, go ahead from there really, really uh, fast. Um, of course, mirroring, since we're actually copying the data into Fabric One Lake, uh, relieves your operational database of um, um, analytical queries. So how does mirroring work for SQL MI? Basically, um, in near real time, we're doing an initial snapshot once you initialize mirroring, and uh, uh, we would be sending the data from your chosen tables into Fabric One Lake, and then from that moment on, uh, we're slowly trickling any new changes that uh, we're finding in the transaction log of SQL MI database. Um, this includes any inserts, updates, deletes, and etc. We would be streaming those changes into Fabric One Lake. Um, your data becomes um, uh, Delta files in One Lake as a first-class citizen, as as any other uh, One Lake data. So you can you can uh, use all the power of Fabric. Um, on top of it, uh, just like that. Um, a demo is worth more than a thousand words, so I'm going to walk you through that a little bit. And what you're seeing here on the screen is um, my uh, workspace in Fabric. We're going to go ahead and create a new item. Uh, we're going to choose Mirror Azure SQL MI. On this screen, it's asking me if I want to reuse a connection that I have from the past. But uh, for the sake of this demo, we're going to create a new one. And essentially, we provide a connection string to our SQL MI. Um, you can choose entry ID or basic authentication using SQL Auth. And um, as soon as you connect, uh, Fabric will actually uh, show me the list of tables um, it found on, on your SQL MI database. Any tables that cannot be mirrored will be flagged here. Any tables that may have columns that cannot be mirrored will also be flagged. Otherwise, I get to choose here which tables I want to mirror. Uh, if I want more control, 
or if I want uh, mirroring to just copy everything there is, even uh, future tables that are created, I can uh, uh, have this this um, uh, checkbox below on, which we're gonna go ahead and, and do. And next, uh, the the only remaining thing for me to do is give a name to my mirrored SQL MI artifact in Fabric. And uh, once I click uh, Create Mirror Database, I'm faced with three artifacts in my workspace. The first is the mirror database. The second is uh, the semantic model. And the third is um, an analytics endpoint, which is actually Fabric uh, Data Warehouse that sits on top of the mirrored copy of my MI data. If I click it, we will be able, actually, we're going to click um, our, our mirrored database so we can monitor mirroring and see what's happened so far. Um, we can see the replication status is running, but there's no data. We can be refreshing this a little bit, and then at some point, uh, data will start flowing. We can see here tables that have been mirrored so far, their statuses, and a number of rows that have been replicated so far. So we're now going to fast forward to um, uh, Fabric DW, uh, and we're going to query this mirrored data um, and, and show you that um, it really is there. Um, we can see here that all our schemas got replicated and all the tables are there. We can preview our product table with all this data. And now for fun, let's go ahead and extend this table in our SQL MI and add an extra column and see what happens with mirroring. So a really simple query to add a column with a default value. Um, we ran it. And uh, if we take a look at our table here in Fabric UW, it has 17 columns. Um, if we hit refresh, we can see the data. Uh, the table now shows 18 columns, and then um, we have an extra column that says um, uh, this is basically the column that we just added. So uh, just like that, uh, mirroring has propagated our changes from our source uh, to our destination without me having to go in and alter it pipelines or, or do anything like that. Nice. That's awesome. This is great to see. And, you know, just just a couple questions as I, I take a look at this, like for folks who maybe have seen mirroring before for SQL, right? This is something we have today for Azure SQL Database, uh, a GA, SQL Managed Instance, which you just showed us in public preview, SQL Server, I think, in private preview. Uh, and then, of course, by default with SQL Database and Fabric. Uh, when it comes to like the different service tiers or offerings within SQL Managed Instance itself, like is this supported for all of them, like general purpose, business critical, the new general purpose, or is there something people need to know uh, about that? Absolutely, yeah. So mirroring is supported on all SQL MI SKUs, so business critical, uh, GP, and next gen GP. The only thing to uh, worry about is your SQL MI update policy. Well, I'll touch it in a moment uh, in more detail, but essentially you wanna have your SQL MI configured as always up to date which guarantees you're getting new engine features and mirroring is an engine feature. Cool, awesome. Okay, so uh, considering that, or assuming that I've done that, are there any big differences between mirroring for Azure SQL Database versus Azure SQL Managed Instance or the other mirroring flavors? Yeah, SQL uh, DB and SQL MI are almost identical under the hood in terms of mirroring. So uh, the same tech is is used uh, for both SKUs basically. and. Uh, um, almost the same experience, uh, or some few changes in, in, in the surface area of the products themselves. Got it. Awesome. Cool. Um, so we're going to switch to our mirrored database artifact here. And uh, just so I show you that the product table is still running. So the status has not changed, even though I added a column. So nothing has stopped or exploded, um, uh, for me changing the data source. Uh, no pipelines are broken or anything like that. Nice. Um, basically, what do you need to get going with SQL MI mirroring? Um, the update policy we just touched upon. So uh, here, have it always up to date. If you have it in uh, SQL Server 22 and you're not really getting new engine features, you're only getting uh, updates to, to bug fixes and, and security and, and things like that and platform features. Um, so have this in mind. Next, uh, your SQL MI needs to expose the public endpoint, and you need to allow Azure Cloud or Power BI service tags so that Fabric can actually connect to SQL MI and, and initialize mirroring. Um, 
system assigned managed identity is something that you need to turn on in your SQL MI so that um, SQL MI can actually authenticate to Fabric and, and send the data there. And your system assigned managed identity needs to be primary identity for your SQL MI. Uh, if you at any point change this, your mirroring will stop and then you will need to uh, um, uh, do some steps to, to recover from that, but uh, have system assigned managed and you always on. Um, of course, you need to have fabric capacity up and running, but uh, this is uh, nothing uh, spectacular or, 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 or strange there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I think this all makes sense. Uh, a couple questions from my, my side on fabric capacity. Like, my understanding for mirroring is that uh, this is pretty much free in the sense that like the 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 consumption costs are coming from your Azure SQL Manage instance and are relatively low. Uh, and then on the fabric capacity side, you have some free storage for mirroring. Is that is that kind of how it works or anything we should know? Yeah, yeah, same as for Azure SQL database. So you get plenty uh, generous storage to, to use for mirroring. And so uh, basically, if you really go above that, you would be charged at your capacity, but uh, uh, it's a pretty generous offering. Awesome. And then the last question is, I know that a lot of SQL managed instance customers are probably using some sort of network isolation, um, maybe don't want this uh, public endpoint. Is that something on your roadmap or something you're considering? Yeah, that's something we're, we're very actively working on. Uh, stay tuned for a, a invite coming soon to a uh, private preview, the ability to use uh, Venus data gateways and, and similar technology uh, private endpoints so that your MI can uh, be a little bit more tucked in in its VNet and uh, your data a little bit more secure. But uh, we wanted to get something out in your hands so you can test. And um, um, we're, we're soon going to release something which is which is uh, uh, more tightened up from from network security perspective. Awesome. I'm sure people are loving to hear that. Uh, so any other final tips, Nic Nicola, or tricks that folks should know as they're getting started with this? Um, I'm thinking out loud. Um, just expect this to be working with a slight delay of maybe a minute or two. We call it near real time. Sometimes it's faster, sometimes it's slower. Uh, refreshes on the monitor mirroring screens typically refresh every 30 seconds. So even if you uh, push that button uh, more frequently, you may not get uh, status updates uh, faster than once in each 30 seconds. So I think that's an important uh, consideration for you uh, while you're you know, monitoring and, and waiting for something to happen. Um, basically, as much as you're nervous on the refresh button, it only re actually refreshes every 30 seconds. Awesome. Great. Well, Nicola, thanks so much for uh, joining us. Personally, I learned a lot. I'm sure our viewers did as well. Uh, if you're a viewer, then uh, go ahead and like this episode, leave us a comment and let us know what you think or if you plan to try this out. Uh, we'll put some links in the description for you to learn more. Or you can go to this QR code uh, and we hope to see you next time on Data Exposed.